I'm Phyllis Lambert. I was born in Montreal and I'm an architect and the founding director and chair of the board of the Canadian Centre for Architecture in Montreal, which is a museum and research centre on the subject of architecture. Perfect happiness is to be thinking and to do doing research and to writing and to live in a place that I like living in. My greatest fear is to be incapacitated, to be blind, to be not to be able to move, to, to be able not to be able to, to work, to, to think, to do. If you want to ask my all-time favorite, it's Leonardo da Vinci. He had such a huge amount of uh, capacity to think, to invent. Uh, you know, he was not a heavy figure. Michelangelo was a great, great figure, but he was very much, you know, making major statements and things like that. Leonardo was always thinking, always inventing. A characteristic I dislike in myself is my proverbial quick temper. People who have no empathy for others or for the possibilities of others or for the world, people who who live completely within themselves and have already staged ideas. People who don't think about how others could act, that are not, they don't have the same education, the same possibilities. I feel safe and secure in having my good friends around. Well, they don't have to be right here in Montreal, but being able to be in contact with them, testing ideas, check, checking in with them. I think that's, that's what it is. Well, everybody talks these days about the fact that People in Quebec don't work as much as other, I mean, as many hours. You know, I never have been impressed by people who work many hours. In fact, they should work less hours and think more. I'm concerned with what they do, production. It's not because you put in X number of hours that that's a virtue. I don't think it's a virtue. When you're working and you're discovering things in your work, you know, you don't, you, when you start, you have a general air, place you're going to, but all the little places in between, and all the roofs you're not quite sure of, and lots of them you, you don't know. You're not going to do. You're not going to go there because you know it. You're go, going there because you want to go there, and so it's all the discoveries you make on the way. All the things that I've done, I think that you know they're just at different times. The Seagram Building was tremendous because it brought to uh, New York one of the great architects of the 20th century and of all times. He was able to do that building because I made sure that he could. Then to have worked in Montreal on saving neighborhoods, of working with people who can't fend for themselves in terms of protecting their neighborhoods. You know what happens, uh, somebody sees the whole neighborhood and he says, aha, I, will, I can buy that neighborhood, and he can buy the neighborhood because the rents are low and then people get kicked out. I mean, that's an impossible situation. So I've been, I've been able to affect that a lot and affect various aspects of, of uh, d development of Montreal, like the, the way the Vieux Port was developed, and then also the Canadian Centre for Architecture. I think the lowest level, lowest depth of despair, is not to be able to manage your own life, not to be, to be captive to others. I think that must be total hell. And that happens to the poor, that happens to people who are su subjected. We know this too, much too much in our own world, but I just think it's a very personal thing. It's just absolutely terrible. You know, I think you're happiest when you're doing what you love doing, and it changes from, you know, at certain points in your life, it changes all the time. So whenever you've achieved, you've, you've pulled together something you wanted to pull together, that's wonderful. That's what makes me happiest. It's not the same thing all the time, but it is being able to shape something. Why would I want another career than the one I have now? I think it's so wonderful, because it's so all-inclusive. It's so, so many things at once. I mean, there's so many ways to be an architect. I suppose the thing I can think of, I'd sort of walk far to get is, is a good, good sushi. I think people recognize a certain energy and, and enthusiasm. And of course, I, I'm fairly effective. I think they recognize that I get things done. Well, I mean, certainly, uh, I mean, Van der Rohe is uh, the architect of the Seagram building and who I admired enormously. And I worked with him closely uh, as the client for the Seagram building. And then I worked in his office afterwards, so I had sort of this reverse position, which was great. His way of approaching ideas, his um, thoughtfulness, his, his uh, being able to englobe what is important in our time in, into his work and to work in a very logical way. I think that's, that to me was, was tremendous. 
I always wanted to be an artist. I was sculpting, I was drawing, I was, uh, I was very visual, I guess, and I, I wanted to have my own life. I didn't want to be somebody's daughter or somebody's whatever. I wanted to depend completely on my own ability to do what I was doing, and that was art. And then, and then of course, I suppose that um, as a sculptor, I became an architect. That's not such a very long distance away, after all. One's dealing with form, one's dealing with volume, one's dealing with conceiving of something when there's nothing there and, 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 and creating that something. Well, you know, I like to live in Montreal, and the reason I like to live here is because, I suppose I, it's in my bones, but also because I have a whole life that I've built here. I, I move out of Montreal a lot. I mean, I would hate, hate to be locked in anywhere. But I have a, a way of existing here that works very well for me, the center, with the people I know, with the problems that, that exist. I love New York, I mean, absolutely wonder, wonderful place, but New York, there's so much competition, there's so much going on that, you know, you can hardly catch your breath. I think it's terrible to have regrets. You know, you do what you do at a certain time because of a whole series of circumstances, and you either do dumb things or you don't do dumb things, and you move on to some other place. So I, I have no regrets about anything I've done. I was thinking about that, and I guess the award that I uh, would like to receive is the Pritzker Award for uh, architecture, but it's not given to people who are not making objects. You know, so it's really an object-oriented thing. You did this building, you did this building, you did, you know. So, uh, so I probably would never get it, but, um, so that's why I like. <laughs> I'm working on a couple of things. I'm working on a book on the secret building, which is fascinating. I'm doing it much more as an opera. There are the arias, and then there are the recitatives. The uh, operas are really the relationships between people, the relationships of people to certain conditions, and that's really very fascinating. <laughs> because when you're in it, that's one thing. When you're looking at from outside, and then looking through the archives and finding information that you never even suspected was there. It's, 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 it's marvelous. Right? Well, I guess the thing that I often say to kids if I'm talking to them, or to anybody, is to be able to always look at things that are larger than yourself. Look at the whole system of the world. Look at being able to go beyond your own personal problems or needs and things like that to think of how other people and other systems work. I think that's very, very important.